Okay. Right. Okay, so we've been looking at <clears throat> the life of Jesus and also his um, methods or uh, the Lord as a, you know, the kind of example uh, that uh, that uh, that he was in raising up disciples and in making disciples, right? So um, we saw that. So I just wanted to hear from you personally, you know, in your life, um, what was your experience of being discipled by someone you know was there someone in your life who actually um you know not just led you to the lord but but taught you you know some of those things uh some of the early doctrines or you know uh, how to follow the lord jesus and, and and not just told you from a distance but also followed with you made the journey with you so if uh, i just wanted to hear <clears throat> what was it like and um, you know, was it a group of people or was it uh, maybe uh, individuals, maybe somebody in the family, um, just to for us to, you know, hear and uh, also learn. So, yeah, just want to open this time up. Anyone? Anyone can go ahead and share. Um Thomas, Dave, Kiran, Sid, anyone, Aaron, um, Kanan, like Prince Neelam, from the time you, you know, came to the Lord and uh, till now, right? Uh, or maybe it was only during the early days and then, you know, you, <clears throat> was there anyone who uh, journeyed with you? Uh, like yeah. You. Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, after the salvation, uh, I attend a church called Grace Chapel. Pastor Michael Vergis is in Kotanod now. Uh, he used to take a discipleship class every Thursday. Wednesday is the usual Bible study for everyone. But Thursday is a discipleship classes for only, maybe we can hardly find 10 to 12 sitting and listening pastor. So this kind of uh, teachings will come as you, you explained in the morning. Jesus said, make disciples. So this is based on the theme to teach the foundational doctrines and uh, things and all, and especially from Hebrews chapter six, verse one and two is to uh, is to share. Uh, more than everything, he explained about the righteousness of God. Uh, especially, I came from the background. I, I never heard the word righteousness. I uh, after the classes, every class I used to go and see the Bible and uh, see the dictionary, see the Kannada Bible language what is what what is mean by righteousness and all one who said uh, you are a saint in all all those days i used to you are a sinner have to repent but he is the first person said you are a saint when you accepted christ your sins are taken like those teachings and all he gave the foundational doctrines so god blessed with almost one and a half uh, year with him so after that i stepped into the ministry i got a wonderful mentor so through their life uh, each and every time he used to teach about the ministry ethics, how to deal with the people, how to speak with the people, how to maintain the good relationships, and uh, how to bear uh, in some crisis when you get scolding or uh, went through uh, kind of tough situations, how to handle things in the ministry. Uh, disciples personally. One side, uh, I got the teachings, uh, disciples' teachings that helped me and build me uh, very strong. Another side, uh, mentors uh, journeyed with them for the mission journey so things and all personally they guide so many things in the ministry so i'm blessed with such a one in my life thank you thank you Thomas. yeah it's wonderful yeah. to see that um, yeah at the early stage you know people were there to speak in so it was not just one person maybe for one season you know initially there was one person who taught um, and then you know there were others who came into further build on that, you know, just like we see in the Corinthians, right? Build on, further build on another man's labor. Uh, but that's uh, that's perfectly scriptural as well, right? So we see that, yeah. Um, excellent, wonderful, right? Um, anyone else? Um, actually, for me, uh, when I first came to know the Lord, it was uh, in a youth group. In the, in 
the church where I was, uh, in the CSI church where I was worshipping in this town, Coimbatore. So in the youth group, um, there were many, um, uh, you know, like uh, same age, you know, people who were of the same age, uh, students, we were all students, uh, people who are of the same age, but uh, who are, uh, you know, who, who had become believers earlier, so they were a lot more mature uh, Christians, believers, uh, who loved the Lord. So uh, one of the things was that um, just by observing their life, uh, how they prayed, uh, they would share about, especially one person, you know, he would, uh, uh, I'm sorry, share about how, um, uh, how, what he would do, you know, like how, how he would uh, live the, live his life and uh, how he would, uh, what he would do, his prayer time, uh, his uh, ministering, his testifying. I remember every time he spoke to me, that uh, there would be some stirring within, you know, there'd be like a fire that is lit up. And we would typically, um, as a youth group, we would meet every Saturday for prayer, worship prayer. <clears throat> and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and I was a young believer, you know, still dabbling in sin, struggling with sin and all that, and uh, having my ups and downs. But every uh, Saturday, uh, we would meet in the, you know, outside the church, in the church compound, we would meet and uh, pray. But um, this uh, this friend would actually come home and uh, he would spend some time and we would go to the church together but he would come home he would spend time talking to me um, just uh, you know narrating his life story and how what he did how he followed the lord how he prayed and also you know he would say about you know some new things you know this is what is happening in you know this is what is happening to christians this is what you know the, this person is ministering this way and these are some testimonies this is what so they would, you know whatever fire had gone out would be again stirred up again and uh, i i would sense that happening so the lord you know really uh, uh, placed me among these people or placed these people in my life they were so they were um, you know, two, three others as well who would, uh, who would encourage, who would, uh, uh, you know, uh, the one, so there were someone, some people who were slightly older than me who would, you know, who would kind of push me, who would also, uh, you know, correct me and so on. Um, so, so it was good to see that. So that was the early uh, life of, you know, learning to follow the Lord, right? So not so much in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of teaching, Right, uh, teaching was, of course, of just loving the Lord, of uh, reading His Word, and those kind of things. You know, disciplines of prayer and uh, and so on. Um, so that that came much later, when the Lord would, uh, uh, you know, send uh, again a person to ground us, you know, in Scripture. And we, it was much later in life when we had started working, um, and uh, you know, we were. I think con considering marriage and you know that kind of a stage <clears throat> when this person um, you know taught us, grounded us in the word, grounded us in scriptures, uh, in the deeper spiritual truths. So yeah, this happened. So um, again, it was a mix of um, teaching and uh, spending time with that person, and also seeing this teaching being lived out in that person's life. Right, so it was a regular thing. Again, every week we used to meet, and um, so the so something that I also took back is that you know when it comes to following the Lord, when it comes to um, making this journey as a disciple, it's so important to have other others who are making a similar journey uh, around us, who can speak into our lives, and you know we can we can observe, we can see. And uh, we can uh, be encouraged as well, you know, by this company of believers. So uh, that is something that happened uh, for me. Yeah. Uh, anyone else? <clears throat> anyone else who wants to share? <clears throat> Dave, Kanan, your experience, Prince. I think we'll have time for just one more person and then we'll continue with the class. Maybe you want to share. Sid, anyone? Um, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I had a mentor too. So his name is George Vargas. Okay. In Bangalore, working with Campus Crusade, and uh, I mean he's even I mean he's even mentoring me now, like weekly once we'll have Bible study and all that stuff. I mean when I was going through this struggle with my thought life, that's when you know he came into my life and he's been helping me out personally. He'll be praying with me and you know talking and teaching me about God. And uh, he'll always ask about my personal life, how I'm going through present, and uh, yeah, he's, he's a good mentor. He's always there for me. Right, right. <clears throat> Thank you. Thanks for that. Thanks. Okay, <clears throat> so um, it's 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 good to hear that you know. Um, I don't think any one of us. Uh, I grew up in isolation, right? Uh, maybe there are, you know, but um, but we grow faster, and uh, and things are a lot more <clears throat> become a lot more fruitful, and you know we mature when we do this together because that is what we see in scripture as well, right? Okay, okay. let me just uh, uh, share the screen, and then we'll. Right. Okay, so we, we looked at the first three, um, that the Lord sent them out to do what he taught them. Okay, so they they learned from him and they went and did doubt um, did the same thing. Like they went, preached the gospel, you know, taught people about the kingdom of God, then also went about ministering to them in healing and so on, deliverance and so on. Okay. Um right they of course, we see that they learn through their mistakes. Uh, and a classic example is, uh, uh, you know, they learn through their ex experience, you know, whatever the limitation, limitations were, the shortfall was, like they, uh, especially they could not cast out a demon and the, and the, and the father of that, uh, uh, of that person, of that son who had uh, the demon came and asked them and said, you know, your disciples could not. And the Lord, uh, again, went ahead, ministered, and they asked him in a private moment, they asked him questions, you know, why could we not cast the demon out? And the Lord also answered, you know, it was because of your unbelief, uh, and then went on to explain, right? So um, so they learned together uh, from their experience, from their mistakes, uh, whatever. And all that, that happened, right? Um, but we also see that, um, uh, just a minute, sorry, I think I need to close this. Yeah, um, but we also uh, see that the Lord uh, see that they had asked disciples who were learning to follow him, who were following him. Now they had many limitations. They they had uh, um, you know they they did mistakes, right? See, we read about Peter. Peter denied him even after the lord saying okay you know you will deny me he actually prof he actually said that this is what will happen so even after that uh when that moment came uh peter denied not just once but thrice and uh, uh, a couple of times right i think th yeah three times um so so we see that, yes, they made the mistake, but the Lord would, his heart was for restoration. Right? His heart was for restoration. We see that the Lord Jesus restores Peter, strengthens him, and uh, and Peter's the one who actually takes the lead in, after they are filled with the, you know, the, with the Holy Spirit, and he takes that lead in in addressing that gathering and talking to them about this new experience and talking to them about Christ and what they should do in order to be saved 
and you know he he gives that message right immediately right after immediately after they are filled with the holy spirit so we see that um the lord never gave up uh, on on his disciples okay? his heart was for restoration of course it involves the choice of the disciples as well like peter had to come back peter had to repent um uh, and in order to be restored but the lord's heart was that he would repent that he would be restored okay okay now let's look at uh, so that is about uh, uh the the lord jesus and what we can learn about how he uh, raised up uh disciples right the, the process of disciple making okay now let's look at um, what are some of the disciplines of a disciple okay what are some spiritual dis- disciplines right i call myself disciple i call myself a follower of the of the lord or if there is someone who's saying okay he he or she wants to be a disciple now what should be some of the disciplines of a disciple okay uh you know when we we read uh right now uh, just a, a little while ago in luke chapter uh sorry not not in luke chapter 9 when we looked at um um okay just going back up mark chapter 3 <clears throat> right mark chapter 3 we see that uh, one of the things that the lord said you know right after he appointed the 12 um the purpose the lord mentions there is that they so that they might be with him and that he might set them out okay so very clear this is why i'm appointing you so that you can be my disciples and uh, so that you can be with me and i can send you out okay so the lord is very clear so so the uh, one of the the we I mean, right at the top we would if we want to say that okay what are some disciplines or you know some good life patterns that i need to have as a disciple the first thing or right at the top is time with god because that is why we were chosen as disciples that is why you know uh, even before we get sent out to do the job to do the work to do the ministry um right before that is to be with him so that he might commission us out so um so that is very very important very crucial so time with god and how do we do that you know it's of course just being in his presence um and specifically in the word reading the word meditating the word confessing the word and in prayer okay so today if we are call you know if we are calling ourselves as disciples of the lord jesus of course we don't have the physical you know the uh, earthly ministry of the lord jesus is not there so so we uh, it, the lord has sent his holy spirit to be with us and we know when he when he said the holy spirit you know i will not leave you off as he said but i will send you another comforter right who will be with you forever so in his place the ministry of the lord jesus continues with the ministry of the holy spirit right um so he is with us he is Uh, doing the work that uh, uh, like the lord jesus he's another alos paracletos another you know he's like is a comforter who will be with you he will be with us forever okay so the thing is that it's it's very very important that we take time to be with him and then he will send us out that sending us out the ministry will be an overflow right overflow of our time with him so if you look at um uh you know acts chapter 20 and verse 32 okay uh paul prays this prayer for the efficient believers he says so now brethren i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified i commend you to god and to the word of his grace so he's saying you know this is what i'm doing uh this, this is the last time you know he would 
meet these efficient uh, these believers these elders actually of the efficient church so he's you know he's just commending them to god and to the word of his grace to the to his word uh, which is able to build up the believer so um so as disciples we need to be in the word because the word of god is able to build us up okay and i'm sure you know we we know many things about the word of god what the word of god is can do uh, it, the word of god gives us faith the word of god produces faith in us the word of god is living and alive and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword the word of god is uh, is like is nourishment because the lord jesus said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from Uh, the mouth of god the rema word of god the, we know that the word of god is also the sword of the spirit it's a weapon so so all this right you know we know so we need to be in the word or have let the word be in us uh, it's very very important so it's it is a discipline even you know sometimes we um so sometimes, sometimes we might have this uh, you know this reasoning saying okay i want it to be uh when i feel like it if i feel like it uh because it's it's a relationship with the lord okay now now this when i feel like it and if i feel like it will you know will will just leave the disciple to be uh, a very shaky disciple and a disciple who has a lot of ups and downs right if there is no commitment if there is no discipline on the part of the disciple to to read the word of god to you know to do uh, to to spend time in the word whether he or she feels like it or not you know that's why we're calling it a discipline right so whether we feel like it or not whether we want to or not we just still go and and sit with the word of god and then things change as we begin to read as we begin to meditate right so it so that is why you know it becomes a it is necessary for uh this to be a discipline okay so let's look at a couple of other verses 1 john chapter 2 and uh, verse 2 and verse 7 okay let's uh 1 john chapter 2 verse 2 and he himself uh, sorry uh, chapter 2 and verse uh, chapter 1 and verse 2 i'm sorry um the life was manifested as we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the father and was manifested to us okay that eternal life which was manifested which was with the father and was manifested to us so talking about the the person of the lord and uh, and us being in the presence of of god this eternal life that was manifested verse 7 but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of jesus christ his son cleanses us from all sin okay now um so this is this is something that um, you know as we walk in the light as disciples we have fellowship um now we're going to talk about that fellowship with other believers but also that um the fellowship with the lord to be in his presence right and and that is what will uh, will really build us up refresh us strengthen us okay? and jude verse 20 also talks about that building yourself up you know it's talking about praying in the holy spirit jude verse 20 jude chapter 1 i mean only one chapter but you beloved building yourselves up on your most holy faith praying in the holy spirit keep yourselves in the love of god okay so building ourselves up when so when we pray when we pray in the holy ghost when we pray in tongues we are building ourselves up so this uh, if you ask the question okay do i you know do we or will we always feel like praying every day you know the answer is no we sometimes we don't feel like praying sometimes we are emotionally down uh, maybe there are some challenges we don't feel like doing things right but if we would discipline ourselves to and commit ourselves to do it um whether we feel like or not then we would reap the benefit of it right and we are built up in faith 
we are in the presence of uh, of the one who is life and whose life is manifested to us and uh, we have fellowship with him and we see that uh, you know uh, the the word of god is able to build us up the word of his grace is able to build us up and give us an inheritance among all the saints right so time in his word and prayer it's again uh, it's a commitment it's a discipline Right, for a disciple of the Lord. So, uh, as disciples ourselves, you know, if we are going to teach others, uh, this would be something that we teach. Right, this would be foundational. This would be something very important that we would teach others as well. Okay. Secondly, we see fellowship with other believers. Okay. Uh, uh, Hebrews ten talks about not giving up uh, this fellowship, not forsaking this assembling together, this fellowship, and uh, you know, just like how. Uh, uh, we see in the life of Jesus, we see in the life of the disciples who followed the Lord, despite all those difficulties, despite all those relational tensions and so on, um, they journey together and they learn together and they functioned effectively right, as teams. Uh, and we see in the book of Acts the outflow of that. right? And they were filled with the Spirit of God and they went about and they continued to do that. You know, like Peter, John, uh, continued to fellowship continue to uh, minister together and uh, as the Lord had taught them right um, so it's very interesting to see how you know, how they would minister like the way Peter raised up uh, you know uh, the person who died when Peter raised up it is uh, it is similar to how the Lord did it you know if you you know, when you have time, you can just go and start, you know, see that. It is very, very similar to how the Lord would do it. He went and he would he would send out all the others and he would pray and, and raise up uh, the person. So um, so what he learned, right, uh, very, very um, uh, uh, thing by journeying together with the Lord. Okay. Then the other, second thing is fellowshipping with the uh, other believers. So uh, Hebrews 10 talks about don't give up this Thing. Don't give up um, this. Ma uh, uh, don't forsake this assembling together. We see that in verse twenty-five and also in twenty-six. Right. Um, so that is a uh, 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 something for us, an instruction for us that as believers, as disciples, that we will continue to meet, continue to fellowship, so that we can. Uh, see, one of the things that we see is that uh, we are the body of Christ, right? Spiritually, we are the body of Christ as believers. You know, it could be a local church, it could be a small group that is meeting together, it could be the church in the city, whatever. You know, we are the body of Christ. So, in in one Corinthians twelve, we read about uh, Paul stating, you know, how every member um, functions. And how we give strength and receive strength, right? Being the spiritual body of Christ. So, so as believers, you know, when we fellowship, this is what happens. Right. The third thing is, uh, as believers, to have as a discipline is uh, uh, is what we see in Romans twelve that we share uh, our faith and we serve the kingdom of God with. Uh, with the gifts that he's given us, with the grace that he's bestowed on us. And, um, so Romans 12, verse 4. Um, For as we have many members in one body, and all members do not have the same function, so we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Uh, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith, and so on. Right. So, um, so the thing is this: that we are members, but we are one body, individually members of one another. We have gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, and these gifts are given so that we might use them. So, um, you know, as members, we we share, we help one another, and as people who have been graced with these gifts, we use them. Okay. We use them within the body of Christ. We use them as um, uh, as a means for people to come to know the love of God. 
Okay, so these gifts are used within the body, outside of the body of Christ. Um, these gifts are used. Right? So we see that. So that also it becomes a discipline of the disciple. Okay, um, if I if we, if we would discipline ourselves and say, okay, this is what you know what is expected of me. This is something that the Lord wants or Lord desires of me, whether I feel like it or not. And then we would step in and carry it out, do it out. Okay. Um, then, um, then one of the things is that when we, as we share, as we serve, we also learn through the what life's experiences. Okay, um, like Romans five, verses three and four. Okay, Romans five, three and four. Um, not only that. But we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Now, hope does not uh, disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Okay, uh, So he says we also glory in tribulations and, uh, and all these things. Um, tribulations, uh, it, what does it do? It produces perseverance, perseverance character and character hope. So... Um, so when 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 in life's journey when there are difficulties in life uh, when there are challenges in life then when i persevere right, when i persevere as a disciple then it produces it it develops my character so there is a path right there are tribulations then if i persevere through that then it builds my character and the character produces hope and so on so what is happening is that uh, despite these difficulties, despite these challenges, as a disciple, uh, one is learning even through those difficulties, even through the experiences of life. Right? Um, then we look at James chapter 1, verse 2 and 4, 2 to 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Okay, so we see um, here again, something similar to what we saw in Romans chapter 5, that, um, you know, you count it all joy when there are troubles, when there are when there are difficult times. Um, this is how you face it. You count it all joy as a disciple. You know, this is for a child of God, a disciple of God, disciple of the Lord. And um, so there are these testing times. There are these troubled times. Um so James is writing and he's saying, okay, know that this is what will happen. The testing of your faith produces patience. And uh, let patience have its perfect work. You know, go through it. There, there is something that is happening in you when you when you are patient in tribulation. That you know, there is something that is happening, there is some strength that is coming in, and there are some changes that are happening in you which would not happen otherwise. But let it have it perfect. Let it have its perfect work that you may be you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Right? And of course, uh, to remember that the Lord Jesus never gives up on us. It again gives us strength and uh, and and motivates us to to keep going, right? to be disciplined enough to keep going. Okay. Okay. Now. Now this is for us, right? Because the Lord never gives up on us, and we have, we understand understand that that this is how He, uh, we as disciples are built up. So, so when we disciple others, you know, if we are developing others, maybe new believers, maybe young believers as disciples, well, these are some things that we would same things, these disciplines that we would develop in them. Right? So which means that we teach them to spend time with the Lord, with his word, in prayer. Um, we teach them, you know, if we notice that, okay, we, 
so how do we do that we ask okay observe see you know is this part of your life or does it happen first of all you know it should be part of our life right as ones who are discipling others as ones who are developing others to be disciples now this needs to be ingrained in us part of our life maybe it's not as consistent as as it should be we make it consistent right we make a choice we make a decision and we make it part of our life then secondly when we teach others when we develop others now we make sure that these things are developed in them as well so we you know as pastors as spiritual leaders maybe as you know bible study group leaders whatever uh if we would do that for others okay we are actually fulfilling the great commission that like we are obeying uh that instruction that command which the lord jesus gave his disciples right? teaching them uh to observe all things that i taught you right so these are these all things some of the all things some of the important all things that the lord jesus taught right when we observe his life we see that yeah he spent time in prayer all night in prayer extended times in the presence of the father right he heard he made sure that he heard his word or his voice his instruction and then he carried it out so so yeah the first thing is to teach others to spend time how do we do it etc teach them to develop a daily devotional personal devotional life and we would connect them to a church or a group or you know group of believers uh and uh, and make sure that they they continue with the fellowship they continue the fellowship so in the time of fellowship with other believers they learn they are corrected they correct others they they learn to relate to people a lot of things happen out of that fellowship right uh they begin to ext- you know use their gifts and they begin to discover the gifts and it's a blessing for others so all these things happen so fellowship thirdly um teaching them to share their faith to witness and test test uh, you know testify to others about what god has done maybe with their own family members maybe with others you know and uh, and and then to serve god's kingdom right to serve god's kingdom to use whatever uh, gifts of grace gifts that god has put in us to to be able to use that for his glory right fourthly to also help them to learn from life experiences you know difficult times testing times very trying times challenging times now what do i do with them do i give up and go back to my own ways do i get discouraged and completely stop whatever i was doing right so so as um, as disciples we we teach them that okay these can be used for uh you know so that the the perfect work of patience can be um, so we will we will have the you know the the fruit of the perfect work of patience in us right there be pa- patient in tribulation uh, and persevere in tribulation so that there is strength in us there is strength build up right so so these experiences these challenges can actually help the disciple so we need to be able to teach right say okay this is actually doing something in you in your spirit you are being built up you are becoming stronger so don't give up right um, keep your heart fresh keep your spirit you know uh, keep your spirit free of all offenses don't become bitter so we teach the others as they follow the lord you know this is part of being a disciple then the other thing that we see is um that we don't give up on them right we don't give up on them it's a choice that they need to make but we don't necessarily give up on them now as uh, you know if you look at our own lives uh, we know that we we've made many 
some of us have made some bad choices, you know, as disciples of the Lord, as followers of the Lord Jesus. We made some bad choices, made some mistakes. Uh, so the thing is, when we are discipling others, we tend to not tolerate those things in others' lives, right? So we tend to be very, very intolerant, despite the fact that we ourselves committed those mistakes, right? We tend to be very intolerant and sometimes just just give up, give up on people. You're making the same mistake over and over and over again, you know, 10 times, 20 times, you know, how many times? And I'm sure, you know, if you're a pastor, if you're a, you know, uh, uh, Maybe you're leading a small group of people. You would have experienced that because you're meeting them regularly. Uh, you know their life. You know some of the things that they are going through, challenges, etc. And uh, you see, you know, you've told maybe many times, you know, this is something that you need to deal with. This is something to be dealt with. This is something to be changed. And yet maybe after months or maybe even after years, the, you see them go back and do the same thing. Right? So the thing is, as the Lord was patient with us, as the Lord continues to work with us, so also we, we continue to be patient. We hope the best for them. Right? And, uh, and yes, it depends on their choice. They might not want to journey. They might not, you know, uh, it depends. Uh, on the other person's choice, but from our side, we can always keep the door open. Okay, meaning hey, if you want to come back, uh, you're welcome. Uh, if you want to come back, if you want to, you know, uh, you know, this is this is what it is. This is what it takes. Uh, if you want to rebuild, the Lord's heart is for restoration. Yes, there will be consequences that you might have to experience in the natural because of disobedience, because of you know, um, maybe time is lost, right? So much of time, so much of opportunity has gone by. All that is there, but the Lord's heart is to rebuild your life, restore your life, uh, despite all these setbacks, right? So um, you don't have to give up on people the same way the Lord has not given up on us. Okay, so these are some some things to think about some things to put in practice in our own lives when we um, when we consider the life of the Lord Jesus, uh, how he raised up disciples and how we can go about making um, disciples, right? So we'll stop here. So next class, um, what we will do is we will look at uh, one more aspect of uh, discipleship that is um, um, this thing of uh, be from a that the path, the growth path from a believer to uh, uh, to a minister, from, believe, from being a believer to be a leader to become a minister. So we will we will look at that so that we can understand. Okay, now as I you know teach and build others, now this is what I can uh, I can do, right? I can from okay they are new believers. Uh, we can develop them and bring them to a place of being leaders, uh, ministers, and then, you know, we can bring them to the place of being leaders so that they can they can lead others as well. So believers, ministers, leaders, and so on. So, um, so we will look at it in the next class, and then we'll continue, right? Okay. So we'll stop here. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, sir. Thank you.